Knowledge is beginning. Knowledge has no end. Knowledge is forever. Knowledge is living. Live and learn. Live and teach. Live to know. Live to give. Knowledge is beginning. Walk and you will know. Walk and be. Walk in harmony. Walk into spirit worlds. Knowledge has no end. Stay busy. Stay strong. Stay honest. Stay rested. Knowledge is forever. Talk to comfort. Talk to honor. Talk of injustice. Talk for healing. Knowledge is living. Knowledge is living. Knowledge is forever. Knowledge has no end. Knowledge is beginning. These are the real people, the real historians. They, they, they hold our history and they're leaving us very rapidly, just like I will be gone. There's people here who, who were around doing things that didn't get them in the newspapers necessarily, but there's homes that you can see their work. Why is it important to remember stories about things that happened a long time ago? What will happen if we forget about the people who came before us and the many things that they did? What happens when an old building is torn down, a story is forgotten, or a name is no longer remembered? There have always been Mexican people in Austin. The first name on the very first Austin census taken in 1875 is that of a Mexican-American, Jose Lopez and his wife Lizzie. At that time, there were 297 Mexican people living in Austin, mostly around where the old Seaholm power plant is, near Lady Bird Lake. In Austin's early days, most of the jobs for Mexican-Americans were on farms and in factories, but eventually, some people were able to start small businesses that they built into much larger ones. Slowly but surely, through years of persistence, hard work, and determination, things began to change for Mexican-Americans. Even though they were regarded as second-class citizens, they insisted upon seeing themselves as people capable of achieving their dreams. During the early years of the Great Depression, a time when many people did not have jobs, Mexican-Americans managed to own their own businesses. Roy Velasquez started a taxi service that served the Mexican-American and African-American people of Austin. He started out with one car, but within a year, he had 35 taxi cabs going around the city, taking people where they needed to go. His friend and fellow business owner, Nash Moreno, owned a gas station. Together, they supported each other and became successful. You can still see Roy's green and red taxis today on the streets of Austin. Around that same time, the city of Austin designated Parque Zaragoza as the first Mexican park. From the very beginning, Parque Zaragoza was an important gathering place for the Mexican-American community. Mexican-Americans have struggled through many hardships. At one time, children were educated in church schools because there were no public schools for Mexican-American children. 
The church was, and still is, very important in the Mexican-American community, bringing people together in times of struggle, as well as a place to share life's many joys. The concern of Mexican-Americans with providing education for their children eventually led to their acceptance in the public school system. In 1927, Consuelo Herrera became the first Mexican-American public school teacher in Austin. The first Mexican-American public school was Zavala Elementary, built specifically to educate Mexican-American children who had moved mostly to the east side of Austin. The school was named after Lorenzo de Zavala, the first vice president of the Republic of Texas. He signed the Texas Declaration of Independence when Texas broke away from Mexico in 1836 to form a separate republic. In the 1930s and 40s, Mexican Americans began to form organizations to address the issues facing their community. These organizations were important in helping Mexican Americans. They gave the Mexican American community a voice in a society that often tried to deny them a voice. LULAC, the League of United Latin American Citizens, was formed to work against racial and ethnic discrimination, toward desegregation, and a number of other issues that prevented Mexican Americans from reaching their full potential. These organizations made it possible for Mexican Americans to vote, to hold elected office, and to participate fully in American democracy in places where they were struggling to exercise their constitutional rights. They also pushed for more access to city services. The public library responded in the 1940s by providing an outlet at Palm Park where Mexican-American kids could come from the east side of Austin to check out books. Live and learn. Live and teach. Live to know. Live to give, knowledge is beginning. One of the trailblazers is a man named Raul Salinas. He was a poet who owned a bookstore called Resistencia, Resistance. He believed in the importance of remembering the stories of those who came before him. Their stories had things to teach us about who we are, where we come from, about the struggles of the past, and the lessons we can learn from the people who have come before us. He understood that knowing these stories will help us rise to the challenges ahead of us. The knowledge that these trailblazers give to us comes from the experiences of their lives. Today, Mexican-American citizens participate more fully in the life of the city of Austin. Mexican-American culture is a part of the city's life, but the history of Mexican-American people in Austin is still not very well known even though their story goes all the way back to the beginning of Austin, and even to the beginning of Texas. Mexican Americans have experienced great obstacles to success, but the desire of some to see these obstacles as challenges and rise above them is why we call them trailblazers. They are the ones who went before us, making a way for others. There are others like them whose names are not mentioned here. Consider why we need to remember them. Why the story of Mexican-American people is an important history to remember for the future. Think about it. Would it matter to you if these stories were forgotten? Stay busy. Stay strong. Stay honest, stay rested, knowledge is forever. Knowledge has no end, knowledge is beginning.